Okay, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to cover variables. <clears throat> so in the last one, we started covering how to create an application with a, a GUI interface. And um, let me close this. We'll open a new one. And we had a form. Let's go to new application. And that form had an edit button. And it had a uh, label. Let's go ahead and put these out again. And the edit button like this and so what we did is we had it so that when you clicked on the edit button I'm sorry the button right here it would take the text from the edit field and put that in the label and so what we did is we took the uh, value from one field and we put it in another now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on variables now <clears throat> variables excuse me variables you use them every day whether you realize it or not and so if you've ever filled out a form, let's just do this real quick. If you've ever filled out a form, you've used variables. Um, so they're very common, and whether we know the term or not, we do use them. So if you filled out a form, it may say, what is your age, right? And in that form, you're going to put, I don't know, let's say 23. It'll ask you, what is your address? And you may have to come up with something here and what they tend to do is separate the question or in our case the variable from the answer and you're going to go through this <clears throat> filling out these forms and again you use them every day first name last name so we do the same thing in the computer <coughs> programming environment uh, but we're going to do it a little bit differently now um, Again, what we're doing now is we're using a teaching language. It's called Pascal, and this is a an entry language, so that if you move to the more advanced ones, the C, C++, Java, you're going to have this context down pat. If you use some of the scripting languages, PHP, maybe Python, some of those, uh, they'll be easier. Uh, but right now, again, we have to sort out <coughs> these variables. So let's go ahead and put some of these in here. Um, so just like in our our uh, page over there. We had age, and we had, let's give it uh, address. Okay, now what we have to do for this language is, is sort out a couple things. So the first thing that we want to point out is um, the computer doesn't know exactly what's going in here. So for our language, we have to tell it what to expect. Because you can see that this, this line right here is a lot longer than this line. And um, for the computer to be efficient, it really wants to know what to expect. So if I were to write down 23 in here, right, this is actually a number, it's called an integer. Um, now we, um, we can store this integer as actual numbers or text. So let's point that out. If I were to store this as a number, we had 23, then I can do math with that number. So I can add it and I can do all these other things. If I store this as text, like I'm doing in this, um, this uh, office here, this office equivalent, it's just text. It says 23, it looks the same, but the distinction is here that uh, this application stores this information as text, right? So that's important because when we go over here to our computer, we have to realize how the computer is storing the information. So um, in our case that we said before age, we know that's going to be a whole number, right? We're 23, 24, 40, 50, 60, 70, whatever that is. You're never really 60.5. Uh, you know, if you're old enough to program, you're probably uh, referring to your age as an integer here. So we're actually going to call it that, an integer. Now, <clears throat> and we're going to put a semicolon on that. And our address, uh, tax, we keep referring to this as text and the numbers that we put in here as, as some type of number. So the text for the computer language is called a string. And there are a couple different ways to do this, but this is the way we're going to start. Right? Um, so this is a string. So what we're telling the computer now is that uh, we want to store a number and we want to store text. So when we go over here, when we use this last time, this is an edit box. And just so you know, it pretty much captures everything as text. Um, it may do some conversions in the background. 
we're going to have to have it do some conversions, um, but it's looking for text. Now the label here is also looking for text, and remember that uh, this has a caption. So this caption is expecting some type of text or string. Um, so if we were to rebuild this application, if we double click on this, uh, what we said was the label one caption, and we set that equal to, Pascal uses the funny equal sign, it's a colon with the equal there, is equal to the edit one dot text. And here it actually tells you it's text. And again, we're going to use our text as a string. So when we run this, program <clears throat> Should come up here in a second there we go so we can put some text in here and click on the button if I put a number in here let's say 12 click on button it comes up but the distinction here is that it comes up is taking text from here and putting text here so it doesn't know whether this text is on two or you know, hello. The computer just knows that it's text. So I'm kind of beating this dead horse, um, but I really want to make sure you understand it. And so the reason that this is important would be that if I wanted to get the number from here and add something to that, right? So if we said that label dot caption is equal to edit one dot text, um, I don't know. Let's, let's say that we're creating this, you know, uh, employee application, uh, and somebody needed to enter their their uh, age in there, and we want to do something with that, right? We can't do it because it's expecting a string, and here we've told it that this is ex explicitly a number. If I um, put this in quotes, then suddenly not a, it, it's not a number. It is text. And so we're uh, telling the computer here, edit one plus one, two, right? We told the computer to add these two pieces of text. But again, if we wanted this number, we have to do something else. So let's say that we have our age variable here, right? So we have a space uh, to capture. That's just like a form. You have to have a, a space to capture some information on the form, but we want this as text. And so what we're gonna do here is we're going to expect that the user is going to enter a number. And in our case, now we've told the computer we're going to grab uh, a number and we're going to give you some text. And so what we need to do is, is specifically tell the, the computer to take the text out of here and we're going to convert that to a number. So this is a little function. The function is a piece of code that does something for us. What we've told it to do is to take the string, right, str, which is string right here. So take this string and convert it to a number. So once it's converted to a number, then I should be able to add a number, another number to that. And I'm going to get a problem here, but we'll go ahead and run it to show you. Okay, so we've told it, take the information from here, take the string, <coughs> excuse me, and convert it into an integer, and let's hour Let's add 12 to it. But if we look at the problem down here, um, we can see that this over here is expecting text now. So we have text on this side, or we have integers on this side, but we have text on this side. So it's, a, it's an incompatibility. The computer doesn't know how to take this, these numbers that we've given it and convert that to text. So what we're gonna do is do one more conversion. So let's go down here. And we're going to break this up. So we're going to give it this part to make it easier. Let's cut this. We're going to paste this right in here. Okay. And again, this doesn't, we're going to break this up to make it easier for us. So we're going to say age is equal to whatever they type in there plus 12. And we have to put a semicolon at the end of the command so that the computer knows that that's the end of that statement. It'll move on to the next line. So now we have our number here, and if I were to comment this out so that the computer will ignore it, this should run this time. And it's doing it, okay. So if I put a number in here, we're fine, right? 
Uh, we've commented out the label part, but the number part works. If I put in text, we're going to get a problem. And we do, because now the computer is expecting a number. And we'll get into exception handling and, and everything else uh, later on. How do we check that this is a number and let the user know that you should have entered a number? Something that you see in a lot of websites. So, But now we have this number, and again, we need text down here. So what we're going to do here where we took string uh, and we converted that into an integer, now we kind of need to do the opposite, right? So we need to take this integer, which is age here, and we need to convert that to a string. Oh, it looks like my program is still running. Let's go ahead and get out of here. This will mess me up later on. Okay. All right. So we're going to get our integer to string. We're going to type in age for age. So now we're taking whatever's in this uh, te text box. Uh, we're converting it into an integer. Again, a whole number, one, two, three, four, five, something like that. We're adding 12 to it, um, and we're putting that in our variable, which is age. Um, we're taking the age, and we're converting it back to a string, and then that string will show up in the caption. Let this come up. Okay. If we just click on it now, it's going to fail because, again, it's expecting a number. We've told it to expect a number, and that's what it's expecting. We do this. Okay. And there we've got it. So we've played with a couple kind of, of variables and we've converted them back from one form to another. So here's an important part that I would like to, to point out. There are a couple ways to learn programming. One is uh, what I'm going to call top down and it's theory. So uh, it's just like you would learn it in a computer science program or course at, at you know, some university. And what they'll do is they'll say, here are all of the types of variables that you can have. Um, you know, there could be a double, there could be uh, a real, and you can go on and on and on about all these different types of variables. And you can say, you know, for an integer, it'll, it'll keep a number up to this many number of places, right? It maybe it'll hold a billion, but it won't hold 10 billion because it, it's expecting it to be so big. In the case of age, if you had this form age, you know, you'd expect somebody to be maybe one to a hundred, but if somebody types in a thousand, you're going to start to, to, to wonder, right? And so the computer is the same way. When you tell it uh, what type of variable it is, which are these places over here, it's going to expect that. So back to our learning, you can learn all the variables, all their types, what they're expecting, and, and everything else. Now, the second way to learn computer programming is a bottom-up approach, which is I have a problem, I'm trying to solve it. So right now I may use an integer, right? But in my program, uh, at some point maybe I'm I'm keeping I don't know currencies, and I know that that integers won't keep anything with a decimal place. So we may we may have to move to a different type of, of variable. And what I want to do is I don't want to give you so much um, top-down approach that you get lost in in the number of places a variable is and when to use it and everything else. I want you to learn kind of more of, I have a problem, I'm trying to solve it, and I want to learn some of the, uh, the nuances and the detail as we go up, because I don't want to give you so much, so much uh, theory that you get lost and you stop learning how to program, because it's a, great, it's a great career, it's a great career path. And so I just wanted to get you that balance, and that's what I'm going to try to do in these videos. So we've had just a couple of, uh, of that variables here. And we're going to go into more of when they're declared, uh, what we need to do, how to move them back and forth. In the next video, I'm going to start with a problem. And from here on out, that's probably what we'll do is we'll take a problem, we'll learn programming uh, by trying to solve that problem. And again, I'm going to gently try to point out more, more theory and some of the other background just to give you that as we go along. And again, hopefully that'll help you, uh, help you continue the series and continue your, your journey in programming. So I hope you have a good one, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.